Cinema, the most modern art medium, is a medium of storytelling. Various movies are screened from time to time. The audience either accept or reject it according to their flavor. This is the information about 10 world famous movies that I still remembered even after some time has passed. According to IMDb, what is the number one movie in the world? The Shawshank Redemption This fantastic film, which will be released worldwide on September 10, 1994, is directed by Frank Darabont, who directed films such as The Green Mile, The Mist, Nightmare on Elm Street, Frankenstein, King Kong. This movie is scripted by Stephen King, a very famous writer. The Shawshank Redemption movie has been nominated for seven Oscar awards. It has won 21 more awards and has been nominated for a total of 43 awards. Turning to the story. This is a story about a smart bank officer Andy Dufresne, who's serving a sentence to life imprisonment at the Shawshank prison for murdering his wife and her lover. Despite being punished, he continues to say that he did not do this. Is that right? Is he innocent? He is turning the whole prison upside down. While Andy Dufresne's time is being wasted in prison, he plans to take beer for friends. Helping someone who can't read learn. Makes the whole prison listen a song. Breathe freely and laugh. He does not forget his purpose in the middle of it all. Life is about not forgetting to breathe even when you are tired. We all suffer at different times in our lives. We all fall down at some point in our lives. But life doesn't always have that kind of time. Happiness will find us again one day. That is the cycle we face in life. Welcome the good times that come after the hard times as a strong man who smiled through the storms. Learn that lesson about life from this wonderful man. Get busy living or get busy dying. What is Shutter Island about? In the year 2003, the book Shutter Island, written by the American author Dennis Lehane, sold millions of copies worldwide, and in the year 2010. It was even made into a Hollywood movie under the name Shutter Island. Shutter Island is a psychological thriller film which was directed by Martin Scorsese, the film stars Leonardo DiCaprio in the lead role. This story begins with a voyage. The police officer named Teddy is going on this trip with his assistant named Chuck, they are going to do an investigation about the incident where a sick woman escaped from a mental hospital located on an island. The important point is that the murderer who killed Teddy's wife is also in this hospital. So even if the beginning of the story is like this, the end is not even close to this. The truth that is hidden, or even if it is there, but we don't see it, finally comes out. Every word is important in this movie. Especially Teddy's last dialogue. Which would be worse? To live as a monster? Or to die as a good man? You will find the answer in the movie. Why is 2019 Joker movie so famous? Joker is a 2019 American psychological thriller film directed and produced by Todd Phillips, who co-wrote the screenplay with Scott Silver. The film, based on DC Comics characters, stars Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. Generally, villains are a race that we have not been able to see since childhood. The character called Joker also falls in the same villain category. But this is a different character. Joker is a villain who has a strange vision beyond the traditional villain. Because of this reason, some had a deep love for this villain and some hated Joker more than other villains. But the Joker movie that came out in 2019 is a reason to slightly change the attitude of many people about Joker. As well as the sensitive story, the excellent performance of Joaquin Phoenix, who even won an Oscar, helped it a lot. In short, instead of hating the Joker, this movie is able to create an attitude of compassion. According to the story of the film, Arthur, an innocent man with a mental disorder, becomes Joker with a violent heart due to the carelessness of the society. Do we acquit the Joker because of this? The film makes the audience think. 
the creators have been created to think that the audience needs to accept or not accept this story. The film shows that the story of Arthur, the protagonist, about a woman who loved him is an illusion created in his head. Also, the film shows that this whole story is a story told by a mental patient named Arthur to his counselor. The fact that he kills the counselor at the end also leaves something for the audience to think about. Looking at these things, the entire story of this film is told from Arthur's or Joker's point of view. It could be an illusion he saw or a lie told to gain sympathy. And it can be completely true. But the audience has to make that decision. Whether we accept this story or not, we too have helped create a Joker at some point or another. I used to think that my life was a tragedy, but now I realize it's a comedy. Why is Silence of the Lambs so famous? The Silence of the Lambs is a 1991 American psychological horror film directed by Jonathan Demme and written by Ted Talley. It is adapted from Thomas Harris's 1988 novel. Nowadays, movies with a serial killer are very common. But in the 90s, the situation was different. This is a similar movie that was made then and is suitable for today. As for the story, it shows an FBI agent still in training trying to catch a serial killer. Every serial killer has a unique way of killing their victims. The identity of this person called Buffalo Bill is to skin his victims. And putting a moth inside the mouth of those victims. This is special because the FBI is getting help from another serial killer to catch this serial killer. He is a psychiatrist currently in prison. This character is Dr. Hannibal Lecter, who is considered one of the greatest villains in the history of cinema. Sir Anthony Hopkins won Best Actor for this role. Did you know that Hannibal Lecter, who was able to spread his command throughout the film, actually only got 16 minutes of the entire running time of 1 hour and 58 minutes? In the short time that the character Hannibal was shown throughout the film, he can not only win awards but also perform a performance that can grow people's brains. So it's up to you to think what kind of performance Anthony Hopkins has done. The other main character in this film, Buffalo Bill, is a character based on three real-life serial killers. They are Ed Jane, who skinned his victims, Ted Bundy, who kidnapped and killed women in his van, and Gary Heidnick, who kidnapped women and held them in the basement of his house. Based on the unique characteristics of all three of them, the single character called Buffalo Bill has been created. Anthony Hopkins has taken a lot of effort to do this role perfectly. It is said that he has done many studies about serial killers, and has gone to prisons and studied the prisoners and even listened to the cases related to serial killers. Also, the role of Hannibal was based on his London friend. His specialty is that he can stay for a very long time without blinking. Remember how Lecter looked at us with those cold eyes without blinking? There is a moth in the poster of this movie. So, as seen in the movie, the specialty of this moth is the mark of a dead skull below its head. It is something that was included to explain death, which is a basic theme in this movie. Now when we talk about the poster, if you look more carefully at this skull shown in it, you will see that it is not a skull at all. In fact, there is an image of seven naked women gathered together in the shape of a skull. The idea of including this famous image drawn by Salvador Dali in the poster. Given by director Jonathan Dem himself. This simultaneously gives meaning to Buffalo Bill, the women who are his victims, and the death they deserve. You may remember that in the movie, Hannibal Lecter was taken to another place from Baltimore where he was detained. He is then locked in a cell in a large hall wearing an all-white suit. The complete suggestion about the color of this dress came from Anthony Hopkins. Director Jonathan Demme and costume designer Colleen Atwood first wanted to dress Lecter in a familiar yellow-orange suit. But Hopkins, who suggested wearing a white suit here, said that the audience would feel the same fear as he felt when he saw the dentist dressed in a full white suit when he was a child. And that's why this movie won the big five Oscars or the five main awards which are the best film, the best director, the best screenplay, the best actor and the best actress. By the time The Silence of the Lambs was released, only two films had won this award. It happened one night and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. So, extending this list even further, this film was able to add its name to it as the third film to win those five awards. 
So what else can be said about the excellence here? What's the movie where they go into people's dreams? Inception is a 2010 science fiction action film written and directed by Christopher Nolan, who also produced the film with Emma Thomas, his wife. You must have been dreaming. Beautiful dreams. Maybe a terrible dream. Except for someone who strongly believes in dreams, the majority of people will not be harmed by a dream. But what if someone can come into your dream and steal a secret you haven't told anyone? What if you could put something in your mind that you never thought about? That is a dream that can have a great impact on life. So for almost two and a half hours, this movie is able to lock us in a strange concept that we have never heard before. The end of this movie also leaves us with many more questions. Is that a dream? Or is it true? If it was a dream, did Mal tell the truth? Does Cobb live in reality? Or Mal? In the film's final scene, Cobb doesn't even hang around to find out if it's a dream or reality. He wants to hug his children. If we get what we love, whether it's a dream or a reality doesn't matter that much to any of us. It's rare to see masterpieces that you can't get out of your mind after seeing them for a long time. Inception is such a movie. What can we learn from the fault in our stars? The Fault in Our Stars is a 2014 American coming-of-age romance film directed by Josh Boone, based on John Green's 2012 novel of the same name. John Green gets the idea to name his work from a short dialogue from William Shakespeare's play Julius Caesar. In that story, the character of Cassius calls Brutus, who was his friend to support his conspiracy, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. Make them understand that it is their own fault if they allow Caesar to lead, who abuses that power. In symbolism, stars mean destiny. So in the case of Julius Caesar, Caesar's leadership is not their bad fate destiny's fault, but their own fault. But John Green uses this in a different sense. The whole story flows with how the innocent young people, whose lives are at risk of being destroyed by an inevitable and oppressive disease, face life. So, John Green's attempt to show that life can be lived even if the fault is not in oneself but in one's destiny is successful. For those who have made life a competition, for those who have made love a part of it, for those who are looking for eternal love, for those who measure life in years. For those who measure love in terms of time together, for those who want a perfect love visible to the outside world, after watching this movie, life will no longer be a competition. Love will not be part of a competition, love will not be thought to last forever. At the end of these two hours you realize that love should be perfect for your heart and not for the outside world. Appreciate the small moments. Some infinities are simply bigger than other infinities. So love till infinity, live till infinity. What is Alfred Hitchcock's most famous movie? Psycho is a 1960 American psychological horror thriller film produced and directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Starring Anthony Perkins, Janet Leigh, John Gavin, Vera Miles, Martin Balsam, this film is based on the book Psycho, written by American writer Robert Block in 1959. Marion Crane is an unmarried girl who is in a relationship with a young man named Sam. Sam is somewhat depressed due to financial difficulties. Meanwhile, one evening, Marion Crane meets Sam and returns to the office where he works. A client who comes to the office buys $40,000 in cash for a house bought by Marion Crane. The money is deposited in the bank and then Marion Crane leaves the office after getting permission from the office head to go home. The film was nominated for four Academy Awards. They are Best Supporting Actress, Best Art Direction, Best Cinematography and Best Director. Janet Lee won the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress in 1961 for Psycho, and Robert Block and Joseph Stefano won the Edgar Award for Best Screenplay in 1961. The bath scene in the film was a scene that had not been used in a film before and was shot in December 1959. Various camera angles and about 50 edits were used for that three-minute scene. A son is a poor substitute for a lover. 
is life is beautiful a comedy or tragedy Life is Beautiful is a 1997 Italian comedy drama film directed by and starring Roberto Benigni, who co-wrote the film with Vincenzo Carami. Is a comedy just a joke? Just a creation to make us laugh? Not. A comedy can tell a story about life beyond that, like no other work can tell. A comedy can bathe us in tears of joy as well as tears of pain. This is a comedy as well as a war drama. The story revolves around the events of a father, mother, and son in Hitler's torture chamber. Even though the people who bring them to this concentration camp are well aware of their fate, the little children know nothing about it. In this story, the father, along with his son and wife, sets foot on the site of death. There, women and men are divided into separate camps. Father and son fall into one place. This son starts asking his father questions. What is this place? Why these strange clothes? Where's mom? When are you going home? He gives the child answers that no one can even dream of. We came here for a competition. If you win this, you will get a real war tank. Once you get 1000 points, we will go home. All you have to do is follow what your father says. Here, in the middle of this story, an army officer comes to the camp. He asks if anyone knows German. It asks for a translation of the rules of the camp from English. This father takes over the job. What the German military officer says is translated into English by him. But they don't talk about the rules that the camp people expect to hear. Don't ask where mom is. Can't ask for biscuits. Can't say hungry. If that happens, the marks will be deducted. Regardless of the others, the child is happy. Because what dad said is true. This is a competition. As soon as the officers leave, the rest of the camp asks him a small question. Do you speak German? What are the rules that the official said? The answer is simple. I don't know German. So fathers are like that. They want to see a child smile even when they are taking their last breath. What is the film Sixth Sense about? The Sixth Sense is a 1999 American supernatural psychological thriller film written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. It stars Bruce Willis as a child psychologist whose patient claims he can see and talk to the dead. This is Shyamalan's best twisted ending movie. This was the highest grossing movie for a horror movie in the world until it was broken by the movie IT recently. Also, it is currently among IMDb Top 250 with a high rating. Talking about this story, a certain little boy has a special ability. In addition to the things we normally see and feel, he sees something special. That is the ghost. So we can see the relationship between Dr. Malcolm Crow, a psychiatrist who comes to find out about this ability and this child and the good work these two do together because of this special ability. You will see what is the twist in this. But wait until the last minute. The best is for last. Which famous film was directed by Brian Singer in 1995? The Usual Suspects is a 1995 neo-noir mystery thriller film directed by Brian Singer and written by Christopher McQuarrie. It stars Stephen Baldwin, Gabriel Byrne, Benicio Del Toro, Kevin Pollock, Ches Palmentieri, Pete Postlethwaite, and Kevin Spacey. The story actually starts from the last part of the story. A set of criminals who met together in prison and became a gang, committed a big crime under the influence of Kaiser Soares, who is known as a very serious criminal. This remaining person is verbal. The story begins with the police's efforts to identify the mastermind of this crime, Kaiser Soze, through him, the only living witness. And we can see how the story gradually develops according to Verbal's evidence. Will the police be able to catch Kaiser Soze in the end? What kind of man is Soze really? In the end, even the viewer will be deceived by this design, which is a must-see. This also stars Kevin Spacey and I will end this with a famous sentence. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he did not exist. <laughs>